Is it all right if I leave the car there for a moment? I have a phone call to make, and I may be meeting someone. Certainly, Mr. Durbin. I'm very pleased you could have lunch with me today. Yeah, well, I was looking for an excuse to get out of the house. Why, do you have problems? I wish that were all of it. I keep thinking about what Scotty Baldwin did. He told me that inasmuch as my name was not on that list of investors in Rainbow Oil, there is absolutely no chance of my recouping my losses from the amount of money that's left in the bank. That's too bad. It's a disaster. It really is. Especially the fact I wanted you to buy lunch today. Hey, you invited me. Do you have any idea how much money I lost today? <laughs> you want to compare debit sheets. Well, listen, as long as you so graciously offered that I buy you lunch, may I suggest... The hot dogs, I understand they're excellent today. You can suggest anything you want to, Alan, but I'm having a shrimp salad. If you are, you're paying for it. it just the sight of it gives me indigestion. Pretend you're at the ballpark. Remind me never to accept a luncheon invitation from you again. Listen, it could have been worse. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't see how. Yeah, I could have asked you to bring your own. Are you kidding? I don't even own a brown paper bag. All right, I'll be right up. Ah, ah. Hello there, this looks like... Just a likely place to find possible investors. Please, don't even mention that name. Oh, I am collecting for the Guess What Sports Center. Mm, Leslie. I'm on my lunch break. Yes, I, I know, but the way that place has been running my staff ragged, I really should be getting paid. Sure, sure. You are not hurting financially. No, he's the only one who isn't. All right, all right, dead broke I'm not. I'll pledge another $50. You suppose somebody would like to contribute to the quarter main fund? I don't think anybody would believe there is one. Steve, big ones. Thank you, Steve. All right. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Anybody here got a spare dollar or 500 lying around to keep the sports center alive? You forgetting I already contributed 5,000? No, I'm not. Actually, I was not really aiming that at you. I was aiming it at him. He doesn't have an excuse. Well, I have a... Very feeble excuse. Oh, come on, good looking. Can I put you down for something generous? Oh, well, I'm going to have to consult with my financial advisor to find out exactly how much I can give. Okay, I'll just say Dr. Quartermain in the area of large. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure. You lost your mind. I'm only trying to save face. Yeah, well, don't bother. It costs too much. Come on, get it oh. up. <laughs> You think maybe we could share the hot dog? Look, this makes two lunches, you all know. Go to the ferry dock, give this to the attendant, this baggage clay. Then there's the address. Have the attendant deliver the trunk just to that address. To the country place? Yes. Well, what's in the trunk? Never mind about what's in the trunk. Don't talk to anybody else except the attendant, and don't let anybody overhear you. Is it the money, Basil? No questions. Just do as I say. And when you finish, come straight back here. Don't even stop and get a haircut. Hmm? You look just fine. It is the money, isn't it? Quickly. Please tell me that I'm seeing things. Well, if you are, so am I. Well, hello, Edward. Alan, what are you doing home so early? Father and I were having lunch, but our mutual penury got so depressing, I asked Leslie to take over at the clinic. <gasps> yes, poverty can ruin a meal, can it? Yeah, especially when you can't pay for the meal. Monica, will you please tell me exactly what you're doing? Yes, I'm curious, too. Do I dare to hope that we came in for some money? We didn't. My dear, you wouldn't believe. Oh, I'm fully prepared for that. Such wonderful luck. Uh, Monica, dear, show them your letter. Oh, Lila, I... Oh, well, if you insist. 
<sighs> ah. My dearest darling Monique. Who wrote that? Sounds like that French gigolo of hers. What, uh, what was his name? Philippe, dear. Philippe, Philippe. Dear, sweet, rich Philippe. You have been constantly in my thoughts since we last met. The few precious moments we shared together. Oh, please, I'm not going to listen to any of that. Well, all right, I'll get to the good part. Yeah, fine, just get <laughs> on with it, all right? Well, the other part wasn't too bad. You want me to go on? I want you to go on. All right. Uh, let's see, uh, as smart as you are beautiful... Uh, ah, here. The money you wisely invested with me in the family vineyard was put to good use. The wine has enjoyed a rapid rise in popularity, so much so that the vineyard was bought by the Rothschilds, a notoriously generous family. Well, not to me. Oh, that's a finished deal. <laughs> Thank you, Lila. Your investment has turned quite a healthy profit. So healthy, in fact. You're now looking at the newest Quartermain millionaire. Well, well, well. I don't believe it. What? But don't you believe that I could get rich all by myself? No, that I just liquidated a million of my own at a tremendous loss. And if I would known just a little bit sooner, I could have used your money to pay off Susan. Dream on, my friend. Oh, 24 hours earlier. Wouldn't have made a bit of difference. The money is mine. All mine. And I intend to keep it. Now, I might not be a real quarter man, But at the moment, I am the only rich one left. <laughs> Deliver this to this address, right here. Someone will be there to receive it and make absolutely certain it's delivered today. Yes, ma'am. Don't worry about a thing. Harry? Yo! Come on out here. I got another delivery for you. Right. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, well, I seem to have lost my claim check. And um, I was wondering if I could take a look at the manifest. Uh, my, my name is surely on there. Couldn't you just give me your name, sir? Uh, yeah, it's Sims. Uh, John Sims. No Sims on the manifest. Oh, oh, of course. I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot. Uh, it's under my wife's name. Wouldn't your wife's name be Sims, too? Well, we separated, you see, and she's been using her maiden name. You know how women are. I'm hoping that this trip salvages a marriage of eight years. Could I see some identification, sir? Oh, I, I remember now. I left it in my other pants. <laughs> Your identification? Uh, uh, no, the claim check. My wife sometimes wears my clothes. I, I'll be back. So long. One more thing to do. Just listen, and I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do. First. How'd it go? Nothing. Not here. Well, no one's going to interact except Basil. What about Holly? Not hide nor hair. Oh, Robert. I guess they're all tucked in. Let's go have a cup of coffee. What a good idea.
on you, man. I waited there to practically every piece of luggage was picked up. Not a sight of the Durbins. I don't believe it. Well, the only Durbin I saw all day was good old Bazza. He left this morning and hasn't returned. At least I didn't see him come back. Could he have gotten past you? There really isn't a suitable back entrance. Uh, they didn't deliver any steamer trunks or anything else for that matter. It's been very quiet. Mm, too quiet. I wonder where Basil went. Maybe he had some other business. His business is our business until we find the money. What'll it be, gentlemen? I'd like some coffee, please. Uh, make it two. Coming right up. Excuse me. Do either of you have a light? I don't smoke. I'm trying to give it up, but I wish I wasn't. Me too. Are you Luke Spencer? Who are you? I'm a friend of Holly's. What? I'm a dear friend of Holly's, and she sent me to give you a message. Are you Spencer? Well, if I were, what would the message be? She wants you to know that she's being held prisoner by her relatives. But she's got a plan to escape. And she needs you to meet her next door at the Arches in an hour. Can you be there? H how do I know that this message is from Holly? She sent this for proof. She said you'd recognize it. It's hers. So you believe me? Where is she? I better go before somebody no, sees wait me. wait a minute. You can't go now. You have to tell me more. No, Holly will tell you everything. In an hour, next door at the Arches. Now, don't be late. What are you looking for? My old purse. Oh, that ratty old thing? I thought you got rid of that and got yourself a new one. No, I left my credit card in it. Where did you find it? Well, I didn't. William found it on the floor. You really should be more careful. I can't imagine how I lost it. Yeah. I hope you're not planning to use it today. With Basil out, there's no one to take you shopping today. So once again, the prisoner is confined to quarters. Holly, I wouldn't talk that way if I were you. You're not a prisoner. What would you call me? You're a very lucky girl. You're here for your own protection. I can look after myself and the protection of the rest of us. How long is this protection going to go on? Forever? No. Only until we have the money and everything is quiet. It'll never happen. I wouldn't be too sure. Even once you have the money, Luke will never give up trying to get it back. You hope. I know. Luke is not the kind of person who gives up easily then the family is simply going to have to discourage him. Wait, you must promise me you'll never do Holly. Anything. Promise me you won't harm Holly. him. Holly, you know how I feel about violence. The family doesn't operate that way. Nobody's going to get that close. You just stand here and wait in the shadows. I'll be waiting to see it. Yeah, how are you going to stop me? With this. Oh, murder. No, thank you. I'm not going to be a party to that. I'm not even going to consider it. Well, then don't consider it. Don't even let it into your head. You just stand there and think about two million dollars. Think of all the places we can go, all the things we can do with two million dollars.
to live. I tell you, I had a great time today. I haven't laughed so much in months. Thank you. What about this afternoon? Do uh, you want to go and see a movie or something? That'd be wonderful. I'd love to. Will a tender moment lead to romance? And on the edge of night... If you stop seeing Valerie Bryson, then I'll stop seeing Ian. Sky and Raven strike a bargain. One life to live, the edge of night, weekdays.